Hello class. Welcome to another topic of our continuing lecture series at, of disaster management at Urban Visual Planning. So we'll be talking about, we'll be revisiting the concept of vulnerability and we'll talk about some different dimensions, some types and uh, contextual uh, underpinnings of the word vulnerability. And we'll be revisiting some of the indicators which are commonly used to assess vulnerabilities. Okay, so in this section, first of all, we'll talk about the concepts and the definitions. So, why do we need to study vulnerability? What is the importance of vulnerability in disaster management? So, let's take example of a case study. In which in 2010, there were three earthquakes with a similar magnitude of around 8 on which the scale happened in the uh, uh, world. So one of the earthquake happened in Chile in which around five people died and three million people were affected and there was an estimated 30 billion loss of US dollars of, of infrastructural damages. In China with the same magnitude around 200, 2,200 people were killed, around 30 million more were uh, affected and it caused a loss of around $6 billion. A third earthquake happened in Haiti, which is considered one of the worst disasters in the world, worst disaster ever seen in the recent human history. Uh, around 220,000 200, people were killed, 4 million affected, and amount of 8 billion US dollars were observed. Now you can see that there is some kind of disparity or variance effect of the similar earthquake which has happened in the world so what were the different characteristics or the situ situation current situations or scenario of the urban areas where the earthquake happened what were the characteristics of the buildings what were the socioeconomic conditions of people living in those areas why there was such a huge gap of death toll in these three different different countries what was the what are the cause of it Let's take another example, another case study. Well, uh, an earthquake happened in uh, Italy, which killed around 308, and most of the people were young, elderly, and women. So now, what it was traced down that female victim had poor risk perception, which caused to had uh, caused the vulnerabilities among the women, and huge proportion of death were observed in case of women. Another case study. In which a Hurricane Katrina, uh, let's say, landed on the New Orleans cities in USA, and uh, it was observed that most of the people who were affected or people who died were poorly, uh, were mostly poor black and the elderly population which were living. So, so now we are going, we are now tracing down, or we are going, uh, finding out what are the key factors or the situation existing in a, in a country, in a city, in a, a disaster impacted area, affected disaster affected community, what were the socioeconomic conditions which led to huge number of deaths. So it has been observed, it has been uh, uh, referred in the literature that disasters are very much devastating for the marginalized. Now these marginalized can be the poor people, those can be minorities, those can be some kind of, uh, let's say, elderly, so these are which are generally which are uh, disadvantaged population. Another example of Banda in the in, in the Indian tsunami back in 2004, tsunami happened, and a lot of people actually died because of uh, inadequate services or the uh, non provision of services. Or life supporting services which were absent. So, what happened that people who even survived they could not survive for long due to different issues because there was no psychological help given to the disaster affected communities. So, now the, herein lies the different import the importance of vulnerability, how different components of vulnerability have is you can say increased or cause. Uh, has increased the death toll of already impacted communities. 
So that these led to different questions. Like for example, why one country is more vulnerable from from a particular disaster than the others, right? What really makes people vulnerable? What are the characteristics? What are the conditions which make people vulnerable? And if then where are why are these popular? Why are these particular population vulnerable? And how can we make them less vulnerable? What what are the characteristics? How they are made vulnerable? Which group of society? You know, generally known we uh, in disaster terminology we call it vulnerable groups. So what group is really vulnerable? And that led to the understanding or the raise of a question: is what is vulnerability? So vulnerability can be explained that the impacts of disasters are not equally distributed. These, these are not randomly distributed over the world, particularly because they are very much concentrated on the poor or developing countries or poor countries. Now, we, however, we can find out some commonalities among these countries. We can find out why are they vulnerable? What are the similar characteristics which make them vulnerable? We can generally characterize it as uh, societal factors, economic factor, political factor, institutional factors. So, in case of a hazard, in a uh, let's say there is a natural hazard existing in an area, so its nature and occurrence as well as the impact which we call vulnerability and as a result of lack of capacities or resilience can result into a disaster. So vulnerability can be uh, examined or it can be revisited as uh, with roots, uh, etymological roots in Latin language from the word to wound and that can be defined as uh, generally in, in addition vulnerability is basically an ability of a system to withstand the effects of hostile environment. So that is general understanding behind vulnerability. It is commonly used in biology as to extent to which an organism or ecological community would suffer from threatening process or factor if exposed. It's likelihood to be, uh, let's say, suffer, likelihood suffering. In IT, we can see the, the elements of system susceptibility of an attacker to steal your data, for example, to assess the data and the capability of of the data set which can be hacked. In military terms, we are using the probability of a success of an attack. So vulnerability is defined in different di disciplines, it's already there. So in terms of disaster, what do we call it? Why do we why do we need to understand it? Now vulnerability is often termed as uh, the human aspect or the social aspect of disaster management, disaster risk. And vulnerability is seen as one of the key component which is in, which is highly impacting your risk disaster risk so it is a very important and integral part of disaster risk and in the uh, as holistically speaking disaster risk reduction uh, in disaster risk there are around the 29 different definitions as of 2006 a study by Thais, uh, Catherine Thaisen she examined that around 29 different definitions of term vulnerability is existing in today's literature and generally UNDRR define it as a condition the physical and social economic environmental factors or processes which increase the susceptibility of community to a back to a different hazard so but generally it has been also been observed in the literature that it is not universally acceptable because of it uh, multifacetedness or multi, multi uh, dimensional uh, nature of the concept it is very difficult to conceptualize it without having proper understanding of different natural hazards or different context in which we are learning the vulnerability so how do we define vulnerability so it's not, these are some of the you can say component of the vulnerability but we can also define it as a function of societal exposure of natural hazards, as susceptibility or sensitivity, or sometimes also referred to as fragility of an individual or of a societal group to damage or harm. And lastly, the inability of 
or lack of capacity which can absorb or cope with the effects of disaster so including all three different aspects of vulnerability we can find out like exposure sensitivity and capacity we can find out the vulnerability now vulnerability also usually depends upon the type of hazard which is being exposed like for example earthquakes tsunamis volcano geological hydrological meteorological different types of hazards we have talked about this are existing in the nature so depending upon the these hazards the vulnerabilities might change so depending upon the hazard some context context the area the measurement or assessment of vulnerability it varies a lot so overall it is an observed that vulnerability is the human dimension of disasters and in the next section we'll talk about some different dimensions and different uh, constructs of vulnerability thank you